Welcome back. We are here to do Numbers chapter 16 today. Uh, it's a fairly long chapter, but um, it's a historical account of events that took place, so it shouldn't take us too long to get through it. Um, we're only going to do one chapter, though, because of that. Um, the next chapter is going to be fairly short, so I might try to do 17 and 18 together, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, this chapter deals with the rebellion of Korah. Korah was of the children of Levi, but was not a descendant of Aaron. And so there's some specific uh, details that are addressed here with regard to the priesthood. So uh, let's, get, let's get started here. Number 16 in verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, okay, we've talked about Kohath before, the son of Levi, remember the Kohathites were the ones that um, were in charge of carrying the, uh, the implements inside the tabernacle. They were the ones that, that carried the Ark of the Covenant and the altars and the various implements. So um, that's that's who we're dealing with here, uh, are people from that particular sub-tribe of Levi. <clears throat> so it says, Korah and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. So Korah is of, is of Kohath, is of Levi, and then Dathan and Abiram are of Reuben. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. All right. <clears throat> I've noticed that whenever we read of men of renown, they, uh, we're talking about people who are popular among humans, not necessarily having renown with God. And that always ends up leading to trouble. The men of renown from Genesis. Um, turned out to be wicked men. Uh, they eventually led the people into a total uh, absolute wickedness that needed to be destroyed by the flood. Um, so the, the idea of these men of renown, that they have this reputation among the people, is not a good sign. Um, I've talked many, many times, had a, a conversation with a good friend last night. We were talking about the church and, and uh, why there's so much ignorance in the church, especially about Bible prophecy. Um, and I said, it's because we follow people. We don't follow the Bible. We follow uh, brother so-and-so or preacher so-and-so or whatever. And um, it's a weakness. When we follow after men, it doesn't matter what kind of reputation they have or what kind of a good speaker they are. Um, you know, I, I hope nobody ever follows me or lifts me up as anything. I am nobody. And, um, all I'm doing is explaining what I think the Bible says. And if the arguments that I make are accurate, if the arguments that I make are sound from the scriptures, don't quote me. Make the arguments from scripture yourself. That's, that's the right way to do it. So these guys are looking at these men of renown, and they're going to lead them in a rebellion here. And they gathered themselves together, in verse 3, against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and Jehovah is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of Jehovah. So, <clears throat> this is the accusation. They are saying that Moses and Aaron, remember Moses and Aaron are brothers, uh, that Moses and Aaron are taking upon themselves the lordship or the leadership or the rulership of all of Israel. Kind of, they're, they're accusing Moses of setting himself up as, as a kind of king here. And uh, Aaron is high priest. And they don't like that. Why? Because they want power for themselves. That's typically the case, right? You don't like who's in power, so you start a rebellion and, and you replace uh, whoever's in power. For good or ill. You know, we didn't like King George, so we started up a rebellion and we kicked him out and kicked all of his people out, defeated them in the Revolutionary War and set up our own government. That's what these guys are wanting to do here. Um, in this case, the problem is, is that they misunderstood. Moses, remember, he was called the meekest man on the earth. Moses did not want the position. God, when, when God called Moses, Moses was making excuses. God, who am I? Why are you sending me? I'm not a good speaker. I'm not going to be able to do all this. And God says, I'm going to be with you. So Moses, Moses did not do what they're accusing him. He did not take. God gave it to him. 
And so um, they say, you know, the whole congregation is holy. All of us are God's chosen people. And so we see here the arrogance of the Jews of the first century starting right here. God chose all of us. We are a holy people. And so why do you get to be the leader? That's what they're saying. Moses hears this. You can just, you can just feel his stomach drop. He knows what the end of this is going to be. When Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spoke unto Korah and all his company, saying, Even tomorrow Jehovah will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Moses says, I didn't choose this. God did. And so tomorrow God's going to show you exactly who he considers to be holy and who he does not. Of course, Moses knows that that these people by their rebellion, because they rebelled against God's choice of a leader in Moses, that they're rebelling against God. And so Moses knows that, that Korah and them are already dead. They just don't know it yet. So he says this, this do. He's saying, you want to be priests? You want to be leaders? You don't like that Aaron and his sons are going to be leaders? All right. So you, you act like a priest and see what happens. This do. Take you censors, Korah and all his company. I put fire therein. I put incense in them before Jehovah tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom, the, who, whom Jehovah doth choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. So the very thing, <clears throat> the very thing that, that Korah was accusing Moses of doing, Korah was actually doing. Isn't that the way it always works out? People who are uh, doing something wrong accuse those who are doing something right of doing the very thing that the people who are doing wrong are doing. You know, we see this in politicians all the time. Uh, I'm not going to get into the politics or whatever, but just pay attention to that. Those who are evildoers accuse the righteous of doing the, the very evil that the, the evil people are doing. It, it's amazing how that works out. And it's not new. <laughs> it's been around forever. Okay. <clears throat> and then Moses says in verse 8 unto Korah, Here I pray you, you sons of Levi, seem it but a small thing unto you that God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of Jehovah and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. He's saying, God has already separated you out and given you a special task. You are sons of Levi. You are given a special task of ministering to the tabernacle. And you're sons of Kohath. So on top of that, you get the most special of all that are not the sons of Aaron, in that you carry the Ark of the Covenant. You carry the altars and the tables. All the implements that we use to worship God, you are in charge of those, and that still wasn't enough for you. That's what Moses is asking. How can you say that you don't have enough? And he, that is God, has brought thee near to him, and all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? God has brought you closer to him than anybody else. Remember, uh, the, the cloud and the fiery pillar, they, they, the cloud rests over the tabernacle by, by day and the fire by night. <clears throat> and so the Levites camp right next to the tabernacle. So they are physically near to God. That's, that's what Moses is saying. You're nearer than anybody else in the camp. And you still want more? You want to be the priest as well? For which cause both you and all your company are gathered together against Jehovah. Moses says, you're not against me, you're against Jehovah. Read 1 Samuel 8, it's the same thing. God tells Samuel, they haven't rejected you, they rejected me. You gather together against Jehovah, and what is Aaron that you murmur against him? <clears throat> you know, what has Aaron done? So Moses sent and called Datham and Abiram. These are the guys from Reuben. Uh, that also joined in with Korah's rebellion, which said, we will not come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except you make yourself altogether a prince or a king over us? Moreover, you have not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards 
Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. So Moses sent and called for these guys, but their response was, no, we don't recognize your authority. It's not a, 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 a small deal that you brought us up out of Egypt. They claim that Egypt flowed with milk and honey. Remember, they're always looking backwards. They're always looking back to how awesome Egypt was. They were slaves there, but they were always looking back to that slavery as if it was a good thing. You haven't given us an inheritance of fields or vineyards, so they blame Moses for that. They blame Aaron for that. It wasn't Aaron's. It wasn't, it wasn't Moses' fault. It was the lack of the faith of the people that they're not in the promised land yet. They were, they were there. They were on the border. They were at Sinai. They received the book of Levit Leviticus. They were ready to march in and take over the land. They didn't have any faith. They didn't trust that God could do it because, oh, the guys are so big. They were trusting in the renown of their enemies. Oh, those guys are so big. I can't, we can't defeat them. Well, your God's bigger. But now you're upset because you don't get to go into the promised land. You got to wander around in the wilderness. And so these two guys of Reuben, Dathan and Abiram, they don't want to listen to Moses. They said, you, you let us out into the wilderness to kill us unless we uh, accept you as our king. And uh, now he's like, now you're, you're going to try to, to punish us or whatever, because we don't respect your authority. Verse 15, and Moses was very wroth, uh, that's mad. And said unto Jehovah, Respect not that thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses is like, look, I've never done anything to these guys. I haven't taken a single animal from them. I haven't hurt any of them. All I've done is relayed your messages. So when they come to, to, to give you an offering, please have no respect for it. In other words, reward them according to their works. And so Moses turns back to Korah. He says to Korah, be you and all your company before Jehovah, you and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer. That is that, that Aaron was supposed to take a censer. Korah was supposed to take a censer and put incense in them. These 250 guys are going to put <clears throat> incense in them and bring you before Jehovah. Every man his censer, 250 censers, you also and Aaron, each of you his censer. Okay. So they're going to make it. It's kind of like uh, uh uh, the story of uh, Elisha against the 400 uh, priests of Baal, right? Isn't that, isn't that what happened there? It was kind of a, a test of the many against the, the few. You know, I talk about this all the time in my classes. That, that majority, the, 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 the idea of science is not based on majority vote. It's not a democracy. It's based on evidence. Same thing here. The majority... Here was was rebelling. The the majority here was going against God's will. The majority, uh, the four hundred priests of Baal were the majority, and they were in the wrong. And and I think the founding fathers of America were were very smart not to make us into a democracy. We're a constitutional republic, because democracies there it's just whatever you can convince the masses to do, do it, and it always ends in destruction. You see example of that right here. The majority of the people got it in their heads. They didn't want Moses to be a leader. They wanted authority. And so they rebel, and it's not going to end well for them. So they did what Moses said, and they took every man his censer and put fire in them. Now, it's funny here because <laughs> Moses is the one telling them what to do for this test, and so they do it, um, even though they reject his authority. But they go ahead and do it. They put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. <clears throat> so they're standing where the priests are supposed to stand. And they're all right there in front of the tabernacle. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of Jehovah appeared unto all the congregation. So everybody's here to witness. And we see this a lot. The congregation, the, the, the whole of Israel, uh, is called to witness these things. Over and over and over again. Leviticus uh, 26, uh, Deuteronomy 31 and 32. The, Moses calls for them to witness against themselves. And then you read in Matthew 23, they were called a witness to themselves. Pay attention is what he's saying. And Jehovah spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Okay. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will you be 
uh, angry with the whole congregation. See, God was mad because Korah had gathered the congregation. And he was, he because the people listened to him. So everybody was there, but they were there at Korah's behest. They were going to witness. You know, Korah was like, you know, we're going to take over here. And you're going to see that, that God really wants us to be leaders. And God tells Moses and Aaron, step aside. I'm going to wipe out everybody. And Moses and Aaron says, you know, shall the, the sin of one man, talking about Korah, uh, is that, is that going to lead you to destroy everybody? Because the, the main sin or the primary sin is Korah's. Everybody else is just kind of following along. Jehovah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram. The elders of Israel followed him. He spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sin. So they're like, Moses, Moses says, God's angry. Y'all need to get away from these people. Don't even touch their belongings. Remember, belongings have a, a ritual um, uh, power here uh, in, in a symbolic fashion. And so uh, Moses says, don't even touch their stuff. Don't, don't try to, you know, Moses, or God's about to wipe these guys out. Don't, don't try to take something as if it was uh, valuable. You know, you, you see, you're, you're leaving this guy's tent that's been trying to lead you into rebellion. You're like, well, this guy's about to die. I might as well take this. Moses says, don't, don't touch any of their stuff because you're going to be consumed with them if you do. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abiram. That's the, those are tents. Remember the word tabernacle just means tent. So they got up from the tents of Korah, Datham, and Abiram on every side. And Datham and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that Jehovah has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. Now, here's an interesting parallel. Moses says, look, I didn't make myself king. God chose me. And so that you know that God has chose me and that I didn't do this of my own accord or of my own mind, this is what's going to happen. But here's the parallel. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I'm not doing these things of my own will. I'm not teaching anything. That's of my own, but whatever the Father has said, that's what I'm saying. I've been sent to, to bring the message of the Father. So Moses, again, shows himself to be a type pointing to Christ. And the, the rebellion that happens nowadays, where people set themselves up instead of Christ as king, a great example of this is the Pope, obviously, but there's a lot of people that do it. It's not just the Pope. Anybody who looks at the Bible and says, you know, I know a better way to do this, who, who sets up their own church, who sets up their own worship, their own organized uh, structure, you know, that, there's a pattern that the, that the New Testament gives us. And that pattern isn't just a, a suggestion. It's, it's the law of Christ. It's, it's Christ as king mandating what we are to do as his church, as his bride. And anybody who says, you know what, I don't, I don't need the church that Jesus built. I'm going to build my own church. Or anybody that says, you know, I'm not going to worship the way God has outlined. I'm going to do it my own way. I'm going to do a way that makes me feel good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my own structure in place here. I don't need to do things the way that God did. God said, let there be elders in each congregation and then deacons to serve under them and then preachers and teachers under their leadership as well. He didn't say anything about a centralized government. There's, there's, there's nothing of a centralized government. The apostles were there for the, the founding establishment period of the church for those first uh, few decades, but then they died out. They were, they were only there for that brief time. They were not meant to be a permanent solution to some kind of a centralized government on earth. It doesn't exist. Jesus is the central head of the, of the government for the church. And anybody who organizes any differently can't support that organization from Scripture. And so they've taken it upon themselves to, to do whatever they want. You know, we, we don't like the way God 
has determined things to be, we're going to do it our way. They're just as guilty as Cora. Every single one of them, just as guilty as Cora. And just as guilty as Dathan and Abiram. So what does Moses say? I have not done this of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Jehovah has not sent me. In other words, if they just die of old age, or they die normally, and, and whatever, if, if, they, if nothing happens to them, then you know that Jehovah did not send me. But if, Jeho but if, if Jehovah made a new thing, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, that you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord, have provoked Jehovah. See, understand, Moses said, if, if the natural end of these men happens, nothing special, then you understand that God is okay with what they're saying. And, and I'm not sent. You, I, what they're saying is true, that God didn't send me. That's, that's what he's, he's pointing out here. But then he says, but if a new thing, talking about a miracle, something that had never been seen before, if, if this thing happens and the earth opens up and swallows these men and everything about them, all of their families, all of their possessions, then you know that they have angered Jehovah. Now understand what this means is, is that if, if these people have truly angered God, what Moses is saying is this is the end of their line. This is the end of their genealogy. There will be no more offspring for these people. So all of Kohath, all of, of Dathan, and all of Abiram, their, their lines are going to end, and there won't be any more descendants from those. God is so angry with them, he cuts them off from the people, not just as an individual, but every, every descendant of theirs, all of their line is completely cut off. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all of these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. So just as Moses said, the earth opens up. The earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them in their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them. And they perished from among the congregation. So the earth swallows them alive, buries them alive. And they were, they were completely destroyed from the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. They knew. Oh, we, we sided with these guys. Now they were afraid that the earth was going to swallow them out. Uh, swallow them up as well. And then there came out a fire from Jehovah and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Did they not learn from Nadab and Abihu to do things the right way, to do things the way God said? Apparently not. So fire comes out and consumes the 250 men that were not sons of Aaron that tried to take upon themselves the duties of a priest. Jehovah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter you the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. So they were after the, the fires kind of die down a little bit. Eliezer is supposed to go in and grab those 250 censers and scatter the fire away from everything. Um, but the censers themselves are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls. Okay, The censers testified against them in a way. Let them make them broad plates. They're going to make an armor here, this, this kind of armored covering for the altar. For they offer them before Jehovah, therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. So now, from now on, they're going to see this armored plating over the altar when they're carrying it. And it's going to be a memorial to them. Verse 40, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger, stranger just means not of the line that, that God designated, no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before Jehovah. That he be not as Korah and his company, as Jehovah said unto him by the hands of Moses. So this proves that, that Moses is the leader, not by his choice, but by God's choice. And they were going to be reminded constantly of Korah's rebellion from that point on. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel 
murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of Jehovah. Did they not understand? Did Moses have some power to open up the earth? Did Moses have some power to send fire down? He's just a man. Do they not understand that these things were of God? But here they are the very next day accusing Moses and Aaron of killing these people. Moses and Aaron didn't do anything. God did. And God has every right to. He's creator. He gives life. He can take it away. It came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. Behold, the cloud covered it. The glory of Jehovah appeared, and Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Jehovah spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. So he's, he, he says the same thing. Just separate yourselves. Moses, you and Aaron, just step back, as I'm about to wipe them all out. God's angry. They fell upon their faces, and Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from Jehovah. The plague is begun. So Moses says, Look, we got to do something quick. God's mad, and he's about to consume all the people. There's a plague that's about to go out and start destroying people. You need to go make atonement for them quick so that... that, that uh, God's anger will be turned aside. See, God's anger at sin is a righteous anger. He has every right to be angry when people sin. But Jesus has made atonement for us, an everlasting atonement. And if we access that through, uh, first of all, by, by repenting of our sins and confessing our faith and, and, and being baptized into him, we have access to his blood. And ever after that, his blood will continually cleanse us if we walk in the light. And if we stop walking in the light, he requires us to repent again, to turn back to him and turn away from our sin and walk in the light again. And if we do that, then God's wrath is turned aside from us also. So that's what Moses is telling Aaron to do. He's like, quick, go make atonement. And he stood between the dead and the living. Moses stands between the dead and the living. Still typifying Christ, isn't he? And the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. So you had Korah's rebellion. You had Korah <clears throat> and Dathan and Abiram and all of their families and the 250 men, the, the princes, of uh, that they led astray. All those men died. But that was a separate thing. That was Korah's rebellion. Then the people rose up and started murmuring against Moses and Aaron for killing Korah and all of them, but even though Moses didn't do it. So God sends a, a plague among them. And they start dying off. And so they, the 14,700 additional people died because they didn't learn their lesson. They didn't understand and, and chose to be willfully ignorant. Translates that to stupid. They just saw God swallow up Korah and his family with the earth. They just saw the 250 men burned with fire. And they're still going to rebel. I, these people are not very smart. They're just not very smart. I don't know why anybody who could see any of these things would, would act like this. It makes no sense. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. So they 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 saved the people essentially. Fourteen thousand were killed. Fourteen thousand seven hundred were killed because of their rebellion, because of their stupidity. But Moses and Aaron, they acted. They made atonement. They stood between death and life, just as Jesus does for us. Now keep in mind, Moses does so physically. He's he's a symbolic. He's not uh, he's not Jesus. He's not the Son of God, but he typifies him. And we can understand better what Jesus does for us by looking at what Moses did. And that's that's the beauty of of passages like these. Is we see God's anger and His wrath, and we see what sin does to us, but we also see what God has provided for the people to turn that righteous anger aside. 
Thank you again for joining me. I hope you have uh, found something of use in this study. Again, I would ask that you uh, study this for yourself, that you make this this your your own understanding. Don't don't believe what I say. Believe what the Bible says. Make sure that everything I'm saying is correct. I make mistakes. I made a mistake this morning doing some math, and uh, I'm I'm not flawless. So. Make sure that you, that you study this on your own, and then when you make these arguments, don't say Ernie said. Ernie's nobody. I wouldn't even argue that you would say that Moses said. Moses was, was just a vessel. But read what God has to say in his word, and understand what God has to say, and then do it that way. Don't rebel against God. Don't rebel against uh, the, the things that he has delivered to us, revealed to us, that are truth. Understand them. Understand their proper place. Anyway, uh, you know, leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, always happy to discuss Bible. And uh, if you got something out of this, share it so that others can uh, can take a look as well. And uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day.